O God, come to my assistance. O Lord, make haste to help me. You are my rescuer, my help. Lord, do not delay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You came to save us and restore us to God's friendship. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Nahum. See, upon the mountains there advances the bearer of good news, announcing peace. Celebrate your feasts, O Judah, Fulfill your vows, for nevermore shall you be invaded by the scoundrel. He is completely destroyed. The Lord will restore the vine of Jacob, the pride of Israel, though the ravages have ravaged them and ruined the tendrils. Woe to the bloody city, all lies, full of plunder, whose looting never stops. The crack of the whip, the rumbling sounds of wheels, horses a gallop, chariots bounding, cavalry charging, the flame of the sword, the flash of the spear, the many slain, the heaping corpses, the endless bodies to stumble upon. I will cast filth upon you, disgrace you, and put you to shame, till everyone who sees the runs from you, saying, Nineveh is destroyed. Who can pity her? Where can one find any to console her? The word of the Lord. It is I who deal death and give life. Close at hand is the day of their disaster, and their doom is rushing upon them. Surely the Lord shall do justice for his people. On his servants he shall have pity. It is I who deal death and give life. Learn then that I, I alone, am God, and there is no God besides me. It is I who bring both death and life, I who inflict wounds and heal them. It is I who deal death and give life. I will sharpen my flashing sword, and my hand shall lay hold of my quiver. With vengeance I will repay my foes, and requite those who hate me. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay each according to his conduct. Amen, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Something I really enjoyed about, um, and there's still many opportunities for this in, in this ministry as well, uh, but working in campus life as I was in my last assignment, there's just a lot of younger adults, of course, who are kind of at a pivotal moment or are sometimes at crossroads of going in one direction or another. Um, I was thinking about two cases. One was a young man who was thinking about the priesthood, and he had a couple of options before them. Uh, one would entail living in a far-off country, really far away, um, and maybe if he ever saw his family again, it would be once every five to six years or more. Uh, it would be, you know, a big sacrifice. Uh, or he could basically live somewhere that was home to his family, and he'd, he'd be around people, you know. And, uh, and so his attraction, though, to the harder choice was actually this gospel, you know, this idea of like, well, I've got I've to find a cross. I've got to, you know, take on something that is going to kind of hurt so that, you know, I can be a good and faithful disciple. So that was his reasoning, you know. And likewise, I, I worked with another young person who was thinking about marriage essentially to the wrong person, <laughs> you know, somebody that, because they were just, even as a young person, they were already frustrated with, dating and all that, and we're like, well, yeah, this, this particular road, you're right, is going to be hard, but likewise, there was this kind of logic going on. Well, I've got to, I've got to take up a cross, right? I've got to do something difficult. Um, and uh, well, my humble, sage advice was a little bit different for each of them, the thrust of it was the same, which is stop looking for ways to make your life miserable. <laughs> Um, because, in my experience, the crosses will find you, right? I, I, I think this is just something that winds up being true in life. You know, no matter what your voca vocation is, if you're, if you're single, if you're married, if you pursue priesthood or religious life, whatever, you know, God is not looking for us to make ourselves as unhappy and as miserable as humanly possible just for the sake of it, right? Just so we can say, well, I, can, I have something to offer up now more likely you're going to find ways of loving, right? You're going to find ways of loving your family, your spouse, your children, um, anybody that sometimes is going to be painful. It's going to hurt whether that's because they've fallen ill, they've lost their job, or they become really difficult to deal with, or they fall into addiction, or you have moments where you need to sacrifice your desires for a time or indefinitely for the good of another that's just part of the course of loving and being alive, right? And so I think there's kind of a difference there in, in seeking out misery, which I don't think God is really after, right? He says, I came that you may have life and have it to the full. I came that your joy may be complete, right? We got to take him at his word on that. Rather, this kind of sacrifice, this kind of cross-carrying comes as uh, a kind of product of loving. Uh, and so, I, I think that's just kind of important to keep at the center of our lives and, and, and to understand that um, that is our call, that is important. We take up our cross in order to follow Christ, and we can be assured that just as he was granted eternal life by the faithfulness of his Father, uh, so too will we, we be granted eternal life. And so in our difficulties in loving, we too have cause for hope.
Let's stand and bring our prayers to our loving Father who hears us. We pray for the church that in those moments where we are called to sacrifice and self-gift that the Spirit would strengthen us uh, and, and we may be assured of the Lord's solidarity with us. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray for all those who lead us in our society that they may do so in such a way that protects the dignity of uh, the poor and the oppressed and for all those who are most in need. We pray to the Lord. We pray also for the sick and for all those who are suffering in mind or body or spirit, especially for those struggling with coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the repose of Kathleen Hayes, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. And for all of our beloved dead who have gone before us in faith, we pray also for all those who are mourning and in grief. We pray to the Lord. Let's take a moment to remember and silence the prayers in our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. We ask you, loving Father, to hear these prayers, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands who become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. In his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. <laughs> and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. A company with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.